for the efficiency. Uh, in the last few years, uh, one focus of my research at uh, UCL has been on a street network energy and entropy. Uh, as we all know that uh, street networks are among the most uh, important um, uh, subset of transportation. The development needs energy and also this energy as a result produce entropy which is effectively the dissipated energy or uh, if you like uh, uh, useless energy or low quality energy. So uh, we know also that uh, one of the main concerns in the modern society is the efficient use of energy. So the main question here is uh, what arrangement of a street networks result in the most efficient use of energy? To answer this question, we need to quantify different uh, uh, properties of street networks. And one way to do that is through the uh, statistical distribution. Uh, I look at these uh, two most common uh, statistical distribution. We, I know that we are all familiar with this one. Is a, uh, bell-shaped distribution or normal distribution. We can describe the data uh, based on the average uh, mean or the, uh, the average or the mean value and also the standard deviation to the measure of spreading. In a uh, heavy tail distribution or commonly known as a power loss size distribution, uh, there is no typical size uh, in, uh, like uh, we have mean value for the normal distribution. And power law simply means that there are many small objects and very few large objects. So another type of distribution and, uh, which is very useful for uh, spatial orientation, to analyze the spatial orientation of the street network is the circular statistics and uh, we can visualize through the rose diagram. Rose diagrams are actually very, sim very simple uh, tools and they show the number of streets as I show in the uh, right hand side, they show the number of streets in different directions. So the, the main sector show the trend or the orientation of the street, and the length of the sector show the number or the frequency of the street. We can use this method in two different ways, symmetric growth diagram as I show you here, and also asymmetric growth diagram, which is this one, depending on different applications. And we can also uh, base the orientation of the street networks uh, based on the length of the shortest segment, then we can find out the, uh, where is the orientation of the longest uh, streets. So another, um, uh, what, uh, how can we use actually this distribution uh, to analyze the street networks? We can relate those to entropy and true entropy to energy. Entropy is, a, uh, is, is used in statistical mechanics and information theory and is a measure of, uh, as a probability distribution, entropy is a measure of spreading or dispersal. And we can calculate the entropy based on the Gibbs uh, Shannon formula I provided here. S is the entropy, K is the arbitrary constant, PI is the probability of a street in a certain mean, and LN is the, the natural logarithmic, and T is the number of the B. So as a, some uh, example of entropy analysis, I show here uh, I choose actually the um, uh, Glasgow in Scotland and I show the length distribution of a street uh, networks for a particular part of the city, the inner part and also outer part for similar number of street networks. The length distribution in both cases follow a power law distribution with a limited size, uh, length range for the inner part and uh, as you can see from the Rose diagram, the Rose diagram show an orthogonal trend for the street orientation and uh, indicating some sort of grid patterns as you can see from the map for the inner part of Glasgow and the road diagram for the outer part show a more variation or circular distribution indicating more spread of street networks uh, in terms of orientation. So when we calculate the entropy for the street length and the orientation, in both cases the inner part has a lower entropy than the outer part and we saw here from the limited length range and also the variation of orientation in rose diagram. So here, uh, if you look at the uh, more uh, larger scale, I actually analyzed 41 British cities and I show that the result, how it applied for these uh, cities. I, 
actually compare these 41 British cities and uh, there is some uh, sort of similarities and differences between the street networks in these cities. As regards differences, we can focus on, uh, I focus on orientation and I found that the, the rose diagram show varies actually between different parts of the street networks uh, along the coastline and the, the um, the main trend of the street network show uh, or follow the, the main trend of the uh, coastline in Dundee. But if you look at the variation of uh, street orientation between cities, I show here, for example, for uh, Blackpool with a pure uh, kind of orthogonal trend indicating a grid pattern, but uh, less, for example, for Liverpool. And if you look at Birmingham or even Sheffield, uh, the rose diagram show more variation or more circular distribution indicating a, a spread of street networks in these cities. So I uh, actually selected some cities uh, and I calculated the entropy associated for the street orientation. As you can see here for the Liverpool with the orthogonal trend, the entropy is lower than the um, um, entropy for the Birmingham with a more spread or dispersal of a street uh, orientation. And you can see even better from the histogram, the more peak the distribution, the lower the entropy. And the more uniformly distributed of a street network, the higher would be the entropy. I look at here the similarity of a street network, which is the a street land distribution, so uh, for London, the street network distribution follow a power loss size distribution as shown in an uh, ordinary plot and in a lock lock plot that uh, they follow this, uh, the length distribution follow a, a power law, which means that there are many short streets and very few long ones. So to, to see if this is a unique, I look at the 41 British cities and I found that that they all also follow a powerless size distribution and this is a unique uh, actually event in all 41 British cities and I also use the more uh, accurate method for this, uh, uh, exploring this powerless size distribution which is a maximum likelihood method and I found a similar uh, result. So why this regularity and what does this mean? So I look at the entropy of the street Led, and I show in, the, uh, in one city, in, in uh, Sheffield, the entropy as a function of distance from the center to the margin increasing. So if you, uh, I choose actually this uh, cluster based on similar number of, street, uh, number of streets, and I found, as you can see on the right hand side, the entropy as a function of distance to the margin generally increased, which is again meaning uh, that the, the spreading of a street network in terms of length is increasing. So I look at the more parameters between cities for 41 uh, British cities. So as you can see here, uh, for the inner part, I show you a red and for the outer part, for blue. So the inner part, the entropy, is lower than the outer part. When we look at the average street length, as you can see here, is lower for the inner part in compared with the outer part, and similarly for the length range, the entropy, the length range is lower in the inner part than outer part, and of course the density in the inner part is the higher than outer part. So we might find some sort of relationship between these two parameters, as you can see here for the whole street networks and also the inner and outer part. So I found that there is a, a negative linear correlation between entropy and density. So the higher the entropy, the lower the density and for the whole street networks. And when we look at the entropy and average length, there is a positive linear correlation. The higher the entropy, the higher the average length. And similar result I've got for the comparing the inner part and the outer part of cities. So here I look at the uh, street variation, uh, orientation uh, as a function of time. So I had uh, access to the data set for the historical data in Dundee. So I show here for the initial street network, as you can see from the rose diagram, is a some sort of orthogonal trend. The entropy, uh, and as, as the city evolved, the rose diagram show more variation of the street orientation 
and, uh, and you can see here for the current time more uh, circular distribution. And when I calculated the entropy for the orientation for the orthogonal trend is uh, uh, lower than the current situation with higher entropy and you can see it better even from the histogram. As I said before, the, the more peak the distribution, the lower the entropy and the, the more uh, uniformly distributed, the higher the entropy. So, but the seed networks does not uh, evolve just based on expansion. They also, there is also another process uh, involved. I was able to identify two network growth processes, namely densification and expansion. I plot the maximum street length against the orientation, and I found <coughs> that um, the gray part showed the uh, main densification and the white part show the, the expansion. And when the graph has a, the graph for the more recent one has a, is a lower, is, is a higher, uh, we have the uh, expansion, and if it's lower than the earlier one, we have the uh, densification. So you can see in all time periods that we have both network processes, densification and expansion. I also here uh, look at the a street length distribution as a function of time, and I show that all the street networks follow a size distribution, power law size distribution. I calculated the entropy for the power law size distribution, and I found that the gradually entropy increase as a function of time for the length distribution as well. We can relate this uh, size distribution uh, to energy. We know from the engineering uh, studies that the uh, there is a certain amount of energy is needed to construct a, a street per unit length. So the, the longer the street, the more energy is needed to construct it. So I was uh, able to relate, we can relate this actual size distribution based on power law to energy. So here we, we are many streets and they are short, they are low energy construction. And as we go to the tail of this diagram, there are very few streets and they are high, they are low energy construction, and they are actually not. So, we can also relate the energy to the efficiency of a street network. I show here the number of streets, I plot actually the number of streets against the population, the total street length against the population, and area against the population, and this uh, broken line indicating the slope of one, which, is, which means that the number of streets increase at the same rate as population, but if you look at the slope of line in all these diagrams, we have the slope of uh, line less than one, which means that the, uh, actually the efficiency of the, the number of streets increase at a lower rate than population, the same for the total length and the same for the area. And this indicating the efficiency of a street network increase when the city size increase. So we can say also in other words that fewer streets or less total length or less area are needed per person or per capita in large cities than small ones. So I just summarized my results in a way that we can identify the low energy and the high energy transport networks by comparing the inner part and the outer part. I show that the geographical location and the landscape constraint have a large effect on the spatial distribution of the street networks. And also, the, I show the street network dispersion as a function of distance from the center to the margin and also as a function of time. And uh, we can relate also the transport network development to energy construction. And finally, I show that the city size, uh, there, there is a relation between the city size and the efficiency of transport networks. Thank you very much.